Unsympathetic Magic by D. J. Natelson. I received the cryptic letter at noon on Thursday, the 5th of January. This wasn't actually a big deal. People tend to get edgy in the heart of winter, and when people get edgy, they send insurance agencies cryptic letters. It's one of those things, like sending death threats to the weatherman when he announces freezing rain. This particular cryptic letter was the fifth, and least unpleasant, of its kind which I had received in the past forty-five minutes. This letter wasn't written in human blood or on dried human skin, and it wasn't reeking with the essence of pure evil, which is never a good sign. One always wonders where they got it, although it was brought to my window by a raven. Anyway, I took the letter and opened it, using the letter opener Stein had given me after a rash of carnivorous envelopes. The letter opener, she told me, was jokingly shaped like a letter opener, which should give you a pretty good idea of Stein's sense of humor. As it so happened, this letter made no attempt to eat me. It read, Within the Haitian hospital upon the seventh floor, I call your kindly services until I need no more. New evidence has come to light concerning my fig tree. I want you here without delay. Review it all for me. And was signed Allie Hendworth. Hendworth. I recognized that name. I'd gotten a cryptic letter from a Cindy Hendworth last week, complaining in iambic pentameter that I denied a valid claim. I'd written her a polite reply, stating that I had not denied a valid claim, that there had, quite frankly, been nothing valid about the claim, but that I would be willing to review any new information. I hadn't expected to be taken up on it. Inform her I'll be over as soon as I can, I told the raven. Stein's office was right next to mine, and she kept her door open. I peered around the corner, careful to keep the Hendworth file out of sight. I was in luck. Stein's back was to me, and she was concentrating on her computer. Holding my breath, I tiptoed past her door and... Ernest Wilkins, where are you going? Drat. I wheeled on her, disarming smile at the ready. I was just off for coffee. Is that a file in your hand? You were going to see a client without me again, weren't you? Not without you. You stay right there. I'll get my coat. Miss Stein popped out of sight and returned yelling the canary yellow coat I have grown to know and despise. Where are we going? The Haitian hospital. She looked blank. You know, built by people from Haiti. Still blank. The Jean-Jacques Dessalines Memorial Hospital. Is that Haitian? I thought it was French. You know, I've always wanted to visit Haiti, but with the food, culture, language... Earthquakes, cholera, voodoo dolls... Culture, like I said. Really, Ernest, you should get out more. You should improve yourself. Get someone to fix that hair. And needless to say, it was an awfully long drive to the hospital. When we arrived at last, Allie Hendworth was waiting for us in her room on the seventh floor. She was young, younger than I anyway, and had the unpleasant look of a tanned, fit person who has suddenly become very ill. Looking at her, I was reminded of blood loss victims, people who had come in contact with blood-sucking ghosts, vampires, or spirit leeches. I tried to remember if she had taken out a life insurance policy with us, remembered the file of my hand, and checked. Ah, oh, now I remember the case. The life insurance policy was on a fig tree planted the year of her birth. Several weeks ago, the tree was struck by lightning and withered from the roots up. The claim had been filed the very next day. On a fig tree. I ask you. You wrote in your letter that new evidence had come to light. I said after the preliminaries, but our policy is quite clear. Only sentient beings are eligible for life insurance. Your contract was made under false pretenses. That tree is dearer to me than family. And yet it is not your family. I'm sorry, ma'am, but unless you can provide some evidence that the tree was sentient, 
It was. Ma'am, I went out to visit the tree myself. I spoke to it, ran tests for brain waves, and performed every sort of magical scan. Your tree may have been unusual for a tree, but it was not sentient. It was, Allie Handworth insisted. And I can prove it. Why won't you believe me? Not another hysterical client. I do seem to attract them. I opened my mouth to say something truly sarcastic when Miss Stein broke in. We're just trying to understand, she said. Why don't you tell us why you think your tree was sentient? This notion seemed to please Miss Handworth. Finally, a sensible suggestion, she said. It's like this. Whenever someone in my family is born, we plant a commemorative tree. My brother got an apple tree, my sister a cherry tree, and I, the youngest, a fig tree. Every year, the fruit would ripen and would make pies and preserves and sauce, but it always seemed to me that my fig tree never produced as much fruit as the apple and cherry trees. This isn't really fig tree climbing, you know. Now, one day, while I was climbing my fig tree, I slipped and broke my arm. While I was lying there, sobbing with pain, the bough broke and fell beside me. And the funny thing is, the bow had broken off in exactly the same place I had broken my arm. All of a sudden, I was making connections. How the tree had begun to wither the month I got pneumonia so badly I had to be rushed to the hospital. The time I got chickenpox and the tree came out in reddish spots. The way I never achieved anything worthwhile over the winter. Somehow, incredibly, the big tree and I were connected. Like a voodoo doll, I said, because I could never keep my mouth shut. That wasn't funny, Ernie, said Miss Stein. I glared at her. I hate being called Ernie. Anyway, said Miss Handworth, I figured out that the way to stay healthy was to keep my tree healthy. I've always hated gardening, but I dedicated my life to it. I abandoned friends, family, and career, everything to keep my tree alive. But it was too late. That autumn's harvest was the last time my tree grew figs, and even those never ripened properly. I worked my fingers to the bone, but I could never work hard enough. And then, lightning struck. Hmm, yes, I said. And that's another interesting part of your story. You see, it's the middle of winter, and, I checked, according to the newspaper, there hasn't been a thunderstorm since August. So how... We live next door to a necromancer. Miss Handworth said, Handworth said shortly, It happens. I double-checked her file. It looks like your contract does cover necromantic activity, if you can prove the tree was sentient. It is! It's connected to me! Then why haven't you prosecuted the necromancer for attempted murder? Miss Handworth actually stopped and considered this for a moment. Can I do that? If you think he was trying to kill you, me? Oh no, he didn't know about me. But the tree? I could charge him with that. How dare he kill my tree? Now that you bring it up, I'm quite furious. He's a tree murderer. Oh, wait a moment, I said hurriedly. That's not what I meant. Besides, killing a tree isn't a crime. Unless the tree was sentient, of course, but I'm far from convinced on that point. Haven't you been listening? The tree was sentient because I am sentient. We're tied together. Look at me. I'm in the hospital, dying, because that tree died. I stood, tucking your file under my arm. I'm sorry, Miss Handworth, but voodoo dolls are only conduits. They are not themselves sentient. It's not a voodoo doll. Objects of sympathetic magic, then. How can you speak to me about sympathy? Miss Handworth demanded, and dissolved into tears. I turned away. I hate watching women cry. It makes me want to shake them. Ms. Stein rushed forward to hug Miss Hendworth. It's all right, she murmured. Don't listen to Ernie. He's all attacked of a teacup. It was the Ernie that did it. I had had enough. Tact, I cried. Sympathy? That woman is obsessed with a fig tree. Ernie? If you ask me, it's not about the fig tree at all. It's about her. If she had any sense, she'd go and live her life instead of dying because some necromancer is after a tree. Miss Hendworth, 
Didn't it ever occur to you that your health isn't reliant on the tree? It's the other way around. Didn't it occur to you that it was when you were jealous and miserable that your stupid tree went barren, and that it was only after you turned your back on the world that your tree was struck by lightning? Look at you, checking yourself into a hospital, trying to convince yourself to die. It's absurd. And you don't look electrocuted to me. Ernie, have a heart. She's in distress. And she can stay that way until she gets some sense knocked into her. It's not about the tree. Claim denied. I never did hear whether Miss Hendworth went out and did something with her life, or stayed cooped up in that hospital and died from stupidity. I did, however, hear what happened to her sister. Cindy Hendworth spent her life suing the necromancer next door for fig tree murder. The End <laughs>